What's good, you two? It's your boy Trey back again in the video today. Bring you another uh, video talking about the trades that has happened recently and who are taking a series between the Bucks and the Celtics. Now, let's start with the lawyer grades of each team that was in this in this three team deal for uh day. So, the Bucks a plus selfish one Tory. They got Damian Lillard. They paired Damian Lillard with Giannis, like one of the scariest duos in the league right now. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy how uh, teams try to guard the Bucks this season. Okay, so we go there, we go to the Suns. I I gave them a D. Now the reason why I gave them a D, really they have like one or two like actual usable players in that deal. Now Nurkic, he could be one of the usable players that I'm talking about if he stays healthy one and becomes more mobile, which is like. That's impossible for somebody that's later on in their career to be more mobile. And especially in the mobile system where they have to be at the level of the screen and, have, and make sure the big man don't come behind them. Yeah, that's going to be very very challenging for Nurkis to execute. And KD probably have to be one of the best helping defenders in the league because this he's going to have a, a heavy load on him next season. I tell you that much. And they might switch to like more drop coverage to help Nurkic, but I don't, I don't know how this is gonna go. Um, and also the Blazers, I gave them an A, and especially with all of this, the the final like the final roster, so they ended up getting DeAndre Aiden and Drew Holiday, okay, and a couple first. They flipped Drew Holiday for a couple more first, and the end they got uh Malcolm Brogdon and Robert Williams. So yes, I. It's not for A-plus. Uh, Blazers and the Bucks get the A-plus for me. And now let's talk about the who I take in, uh, in a series between the Bucks and the Celtics. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Well, we already just talked about the Damian Lillard move, right? Um, and then before that, they really what, didn't do much in the whole season. Now, they did sign Chris Livingston, right, in the draft. Um, I... I, it is what it is. He was a second round prospect. I don't think he's gonna get major minutes in this team. Um, they still got Marjan on both channel. They still got Pat Connaughton. They just signed Campaign. Um, they still got Jay Crowder. They still got Bobby Porter. Uh, they, they picked up Robin Lopez for what it's worth. I don't. It is what it is. Um, and they signed. I think did I mentioned they signed Lee Beasley. If I didn't. There you go. They signed Lee Beasley. And yeah, that's their final roster. And I, I before like like I said, if they didn't do this Dane move, I don't know how this was probably like another first or second round exit again because I just didn't see Avenue where the Bucks, you know, they have a great probably elite regular season. They go to the playoffs and they have to hit him with on Giannis because outside Giannis, who is really creating for that team? Chris Middleton, he obviously took a step back because he that was his first year after his knee injury. So he wasn't going to be the same. It is what it is. Um, Drew Holiday, dog. <laughs> dog. What was he doing out there in those, those, what, three years with the Bucks? 2021, when he was, like, solidified as the third option, he snuck up the place. Like, dude, like, I understand him taking more of a ball handling role and, you know, more pressure have to be on him to create. But, dog, he was the third option in 2021, and he looked horribly, uh, like, ho ho like, downright horrific, bad, horrifically bad. And, um, yeah, I and I just, in this half-court offense has been a constant theme. Giannis at the current mid-range side, he got to post. He got to do. He got to do more than what he was like accustomed to doing in the regular season. Even though folks be trying to act like his regular season low is just so enormous, but it's weird. It um. So yeah, we go on today. We go and talk about the Celtics. Now the Celtics, they just picked up Drew Holiday in this deal, um, and then before that they signed Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, well, yeah, they traded for him. They traded uh, Marcus Smart. They did a couple first for Christopher Zingas. Then they re-signed him. Then, um, let me see, in the draft, they signed this, this that 
that dude from Arkansas. I can't think of his name, but they signed him in the draft. And um, yeah, they really, they really was just in the market for trade because they they got off Marcus Smart, Robert Williams, uh, Malcolm Brogdon. Trying to see who else, Danilo Gallinari. Um, and yeah, and they end up getting Drew Holiday and Chris Alphonsus. Now, I'm going to let you be a judge if, if that's an upgrade. And I believe it's a slight upgrade, but losing Robert Williams in this deal will hurt a little bit. I don't care what, how folks try to brush it off as, but, dude, Robert Williams giving you a spot 20 minutes a game and being a, a, another rim protector on the floor, no, that that was valuable. I don't care. Now you have to heavily rely on Christopher Jenkins staying healthy, okay? That's that's a challenge. And you better hope and pray that he's uh fully recovered from that uh what plantar fasciitis. You better hope he's re fully recovered from that. Uh they have to rely on old man Al Horford to be a good pick and roll defender when he was like one of the worst pick and roll defenders this past playoffs. Like bad. I think he was giving like one point, what two uh, points per possession in the pick and roll. You're not going to win that way. You're not going to win that way. Um, yeah, uh, and they and with them at picking up Chris Jenkins, they basically uh, replaced Robert Will in his helper role with Chris Jenkins, and Chris Jenkins will he provide offense for the Celtics to explore more avenues on, on that end of the floor. This it's an upgrade, but dog, uh, it's just the depth behind them is just questionable. Because also one name I didn't mention, Osei Brissett, they have to rely on him playing the four. Now I don't have a problem with him playing the four. It just it I, it's my concern is mostly the five spot. That is mostly my concern. And the defensive versatility they once had with Grant, Rob, and uh, Marcus Smart, they don't have that no more. Well, they have it with Drew Holiday. And, um, and uh, you know, the Jays and O'Shea Brissett can switch. Can switch. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, you don't want these guys in space because Al Horford and uh, Christopher Jenkins, they are, like, slow for your bigs. Like, you, you do not want them in space consistently. So, yeah, they defensive versatility definitely went down because now it's only, like, certain lineups they can play to um, – Make sure that you know they they not fully compromised on that end. So yeah, who will I take in a seven game series? Now as it stands right now, I would have to choose the books. Now the reason why I have to the, the reason I choose the books, well it's quite simple. Um, you pair one of the best pick and roll ball handler scores in the league with one of the best role men in the league, and we we we. And then I now my only concern is like how would how is Adrian Griffin going to look? How is he going to coach? How is how is the offense gonna look up under him? Because that's definitely a big question mark. But if he can like sell ways to you know, sell career ways to uh get Giannis and uh Damian Lillard in the pick and roll, man, and then you can explore avenues with Damian Lillard is the screen, man, and Giannis is the pick and roll, but then it's like, dog, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> Bro, that, that that duo is scary. It's like, dude, like they can just put so much avenues on that end. And folks going to bring up, oh, I want Drew Holland in the play because he can guard and uh, this and that. Dog, no, they, like I this is funny. They need more offensive they, they need a side career on the end. They need some more offensive firepower, and they saw that. They were self-aware in the fact that Giannis, like, he's coming up for a new contract. We have to accommodate him somehow or he's going to leave because ultimately they had Drew Holiday at the time that wanted to retire soon. Chris Milton, he's still recovering from that knee injury. We don't know how he's going to win this year. Brooke Lopez is old. You don't want to allow him for scoring too much. Um, Bobby Portis can give you some juice, but he's not the side creator. No, like he's, he's nowhere near the side creator, David Lewis, but he can give you some uh, juice off the bench. And that's really it at, before this name trade. And now for the Celtics, um, 
it's just the consistency. Uh, it's it's gonna come down to the uh, consistency of Jason Taylor and Jalen Brown. That, that's my only concern with them. Uh, in their front court depth, like how is that going to look? And if I'm being honest, if we think, if we peel back a little bit, who's the best duo? Giannis and Dane or Jalen Brown and Jason Taylor? Now I would have to say Jason Taylor and Jalen Brown because they've been together longer and they um. They've been to multiple conference finals. I have to say, I have to give them that respect. But coming into the season, like, clean soil, we come into the season, what duo is better? I believe the Giannis and Damian Lillard duo is much better because you can play off each other. They can, Damian Lillard can be the pick and roll man. Uh, Giannis can be the pick and roll man. And they can just, you know, just go off that. And then they have Brooke Lopez. They have, um, Pat Conte, who can shoot it, but he's not some elite shooter, but he can shoot it. They have uh, Chris Milton. Uh, they have, Brooke, like I just mentioned, Brooke Lopez. No, this floor is going to be spaced out, and there's going to be so many driving lanes to attack. I want to say, like, this is not going to be easy for the Celtics because Al Horford, like I just mentioned, he's one of the worst pick and roll ball handlers on the team. And, yeah, I, I would think, it, like, the Celtics will have to literally get all types of career to stop their pick and roll. And I know I'm rambling a little bit, so it's time to end this video. So, yeah, if you guys like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and this is your boy, Trail, and I'm out.